If you're one of those people who has always wondered what's in my portfolio on the Zimbabwe Stock Exchange, well then this video might give you a little bit of a sneak peek. In this video, I'm going to explain to you guys my top 5 holdings on the Zimbabwe Stock Exchange. As I have always said, I'm not a registered financial advisor, but what I will do is to explain to you the reasons why I love these five stocks, the opportunities and risks which I see within them as businesses. On number five on my largest stock holdings is British American Tobacco Zimbabwe, BAT being its ticker symbol. Let's just look at the rundown here of the things that you might want to know about this stock. This company is in the consumer goods sector. The industry that is specific to this company is the tobacco industry and the market cap of this company comes at around 61.9 billion Zimbabwean dollars. This company has actually lost 6.31% year to date in terms of its market value on the Zimbabwe Stock Exchange. But in the past year, the company has gone up 243.40%. Coming to why I like this company, you realize that as I've already mentioned and alluded in the beginning, this company sells an addictive array of products. This is something that, of course, depending on your ethical morals, you might consider a good or a bad thing. But I especially consider it as an investor to be a good thing because you are looking at a company whose products are actually sticking to the people that it is sold to. Looking at this company's last trading update, which was given in December 2021, we'll actually see that the overall volumes of the products of the company went up 32%. Of importance here is to note that the volumes for export for cut-thread tobacco and leaf tobacco, they actually went up 44%. This is something that is very good and something that is good, especially considering in the context of Zimbabwe, where companies are very much in a good position if they are exporting their products because foreign currency is really scarce to come by. Another point to note here or sort of on the positive side is that this company's management has actually taken a stance to operate on a zero leverage policy. Why would this be good you might ask? You see that most companies on the Zimbabwe Stock Exchange, they have been burdened by legacy debt which they have not been able to pay, especially foreign currency debt which they managed to acquire during the time when the United States dollar was being used as the legal tender in Zimbabwe. And when you have a management that is adopting a zero leverage policy, you see that this is something that will really make you sleep well as an investor. What risks do I see in this business you might ask? Of course the biggest risk that I see is that the company in its last trading update mentioned that its operating expenses had gone up 1,394% excessively of course due to marketing. They have been doing crazy marketing in the local market especially for their sort of value tobacco products. We are looking at cigarettes and tobacco products that are sold to the lower side of the market, the people who might not really have a lot of money. And these people have been proving that they have been moving away and sort of just going into the local market and buying tobacco leaves from farmers using newspapers and using this to smoke. And the company has been really aggressively trying to win back this segment of the market. Another risk, of course, that this company has faced that it mentioned in its trading update is the fact that the excise duty on tobacco products has actually gone up from an equivalent of 100 Zimbabwean dollars per 1,000 cigarettes all the way to 5 US dollars per 1,000 cigarettes. When you assess this, you will see that this is about 11 times increase in the amount of excise duty that the company has had to pay on its products. Next, following closely at number 4 on my top 5 largest holdings is Insco Africa Limited, which is has a ticker symbol INN. Just giving a rundown of the things that you might want to know about this company. The sector is industrials and the industry, specific industry, is general industrials. Looking at the market cap of this company, it comes at about $125.4 billion. The performance of this company, year to date, it has gone up 36.74%. In the past one year alone, the company has gone up 319.81%. The dividend yield as of October 2021 on this company has been 1.91%. Why do I like this company, you might ask? This is a company that you will find in every Zimbabwean kitchen and every Zimbabwean backyard. Starting with the kitchen, you will see that when you get into someone's kitchen, you will see a Capri free. You will see that people will have bakers in bread on their table. This bread is baked for Simvisa by Insco's uh, sort of a uh, bread 
milling operation and you see that people have flour in case they are not actually using the brand where would this flour come from this flour will be coming from national foods limited which is also a company that is under the insco umbrella and then of course you find people are having as they're having their bread they put in ham they put in poloni where do these products come from these products are coming from cocoa which is another company that is under the insco umbrella and now you might say wow what else what are you talking about in terms of the zim Beckians? anyone who is trying to measure into any sort of urban best business these days is venturing into chickens and they're getting most of their day old chicks from Ivins, which is another company that is owned by insco so as you can realize from sort of following this trend you see that this is a company that really permeates into zimbabwean people's livelihoods without them really realizing how far it's deep roots are setting in the society volumes as of the last trading update have also been trending upwards for insco this is something that investors would really want to appreciate this is something that investors are always concerned about as to what the sales volumes have been doing for insco in specific let's look at sort of like the breakdown of its major subsidiaries here we're looking at national foods flour maize stock feeds uh, the volumes have gone up 24 percent quarter on quarter as of the last trading update, of course, that was given on October 25 in 2021, uh, the Bakeries division uh, its volumes have grown up 32% quarter on quarter. That's also a good thing. The other good thing about the Bakeries division is that the company has been excessively trying to invest in plant automation to make sure that more bread can be produced without really a lot of labor, which is something that will definitely give back more money to investors and will definitely lower the labor costs, which is something that investors are also always on the lookout for. Another thing to look at here is the Qualcomm division, whose um, sort of volumes have gone up 25% quarter on quarter as of the last trading update. We also want to look at Ivins. The day-old chicks business in particular has been really good. 39% increase in volumes quarter over quarter. What are the risks that I foresee in this business, you might ask? Well, the first one for sure has to be the extreme weather patterns we've been experiencing in Zimbabwe. You look at the droughts, you look at the cyclones, and definitely when you look at those two, you begin to see that there might not be a favorable sort of future for this business, just um, while looking at it on the surface. This, of course, does not mean that the extreme weather patterns would really lead to a closing down of this business or, you know, winding down of operations per se, but it simply makes it difficult for the business to operate. By this I mean that if Zimbabwe is going to experience any extreme weather patterns and this business is going to be forced to import grain, of course the problem with importing is really the fact that the, the business will be selling its products in Zimbabwe in local currency, that is the Zimbabwean dollar, but would have to source whether the Chinese rem uh, renminbi, whether it has to source the Brazilian real or the American dollars to be able to import most of the cereals that it would need for its production process. So any extreme weather patterns that might come around can definitely spell a little bit of disaster for this business. Another risk I see is the risk that comes from the reduced power supply on the national grid. Of course, this is a business that has big milling operations whose machines definitely need to be running 24-7 and whose machines are difficult to put up once they have been stepped down because of lack of power. Of course, as you see, it means that the business will have standby generators to make sure that there is uninterrupted milling in its flour mills and its stock feeds milling operations. But what happens when these power cuts are extended for 12, 24 or even 72 hours as we have seen within this economy? Then it means that this business will begin to have a lot of cost overruns that are done since diesel generators are definitely a lot more expensive to run compared to just using electricity that is provided on the national grid. Coming up at number three on my list is a business that most people have definitely used, especially in the past lockdown session. I'm talking here of the biggest mobile telecommunications operator in Zimbabwe. This company is Zimbabwe's largest mobile telecoms company. It provides solutions in mobile telephones and in data services. But of course, it does have other sectors in which it is actually also active in and which it operates in. I'm talking here of interest in e-commerce through Kumi Zimbabwe. I'm talking here of interest in power through distributed power Africa. I'm talking here of interest in mobile money uh, through Cassava Smart Tech Zimbabwe in where it owns 20% shareholding. Of course, the company also involved in beverages through the Mutare Bottling Company and of course, media, among many other things. 
let's look at the rundown of the things that you definitely need to know about this company. The ticker symbol in case you choose to buy it and send to your stock broker is ECO, ECO. Uh, of course, this sector, as I have said, is telecommunications and the specific industry in which it operates in is mobile telecommunications. This is a big company by Zimbabwean standards. Uh, the market cap of this company is 259.4 billion Zimbabwean dollars. Coming to the performance of the company, year to date, the company has retained 18.03%. In the past year alone, the company has gone up 607.03%. As of December 2021, the dividend yield was 1.12%. This company is another blue chip company. It has significant market share within Zimbabwe. We're looking here at a country of a population of about 14 million people according to the World Bank. And of those 14 million people, Econet Wireless Zimbabwe has 18 million subscribers. When we come to data services, the company has 8 million active users who are currently accessing uh, the internet through its services. Let's look at the January 2022 trading update which the company did give out just a few uh, weeks ago. Traffic year over year has been on a very good positive uptrend. We're looking at 43% increase for data year over year. In the pipeline, the company is having 84G LTE sites which it plans to launch um, that it actually did commission in the last quarter and it has a lot more that are in the pipeline being done by the end of uh, full year 2022. Another good thing of course is that we are looking here at a business where even if COVID is to increase, even if we are going to have more variants coming in, we have a lot of people then who will be forced to work from home. These people would demand the network services from this company and this is definitely something that is positive for shareholders of this company because even if we are going to have another pandemic, the business will still likely continue to do well and this is something that you definitely want to consider as you're structuring your portfolio. Of course here, another interesting thing to realize is that the regulator seems to have been working very well with the mobile telephone companies. The Zimbabwean regulator, the Postal Telecommunications Regulatory Authority of Zimbabwe, Portras, has definitely allowed these mobile telecommunications companies, we're talking here of the two main ones, NetOne and Econet, to be increasing the prices that they need for data uh, and the prices of course for most of these other bundles that people need within the country. This is definitely something that is uh, good because it shows that the company can always catch up with inflation which has, seems to be a problem in Zimbabwe and when the company catches up with inflation there is nothing that's going to be eaten on terms of your returns as the investor and this is something that you definitely want to be on the lookout for. What are the risks that I see in this business you might ask? I'm looking here of course at the power problem that I have talked about for the other companies. Power always remains a problem and for Econet it is particularly important because without power people won't be able to use the services, they won't be able to make the phone calls, they won't be able to access the data and so the business has to always make sure that there is power at the base stations for network availability to be there. Another risk that I might see within this business is the foreign currency risk. Of course, this is one of the businesses in Zimbabwe where it directly requires a lot of foreign currency. Base stations, we're talking of repairs, spare parts, we're talking of software that is used within the business. All this needs to be important. When they don't import all these things, then the business runs to the ground. When there is a change from 3G to 4G to 5G, there is a requirement that they bring in new equipment. There's a requirement that they buy a new software that, they, that is needed for this business. And definitely, because of this, there is a big mismatch in which they are selling all their services in Zimbabwe using Zimbabwean dollars. They are not exporting any of the mobile telephone uh, business out of Zimbabwe. They're getting Zimbabwean dollars and where they always need foreign currency. Let's look at my number two here, Simbisa Zimbabwe Limited. Of course, uh, this company, as most of you would know, is involved in the quick service restaurant business, what most people refer to as fast food. The company has, of course, a lot of intellectual property, receipts, most of the other things, and how it comes up with the best chicken within the region, or the best ice cream, or the best pizza. This is very, very useful intellectual property top of licensing it to other people who are actually involved as franchisees in other countries. The company does also operate its own restaurants. Currently, the company is available in 11 countries within the African region. Of course, this is something that is very good, which makes it very diversified. Let's look at the important points about this company that I might want you to just uh, look at here. The ticker symbol is going to be SIM, SIM, and the sector, consumer goods, the industry, 
travel and leisure. It's an important point here, but I will explain just a little bit after this as to why this loophole in having this company as a travel and leisure business actually allows it to gain an advantage compared to other companies that are within operating within the Zimbabwean market. The market cap of this company is, comes at 75.1 billion Zimbabwean dollars. As of year to date, the company has come up at 49.89% increase. In the past year alone, the company has increased 594.65% in the past year. As of October 2021, the dividend yield was sitting at 0.8%. I really, really love this stock. It goes back to the old story that is told by the Oracle of Omar, Warren Buffett, when he tries to explain why Seas Candy is a very uh, pivotal business within the Berkshire Hathaway family. For some of you who might not have heard this story before, I'm talking here of the fact that this is a company that is associated with leisure. This is a company that is associated with people going out on dates and people enjoying. When someone goes out on a date and they buy their partner this amazing box of chicken in, they buy their partner this amazing box of pizza in, or they buy their partner this amazing cone of ice cream from Creamy Inn, what you're looking at here is sort of a process, a ritual that comes in in the process of these dates. You buy whatever your partner wants, whatever your partner desires, based on whether they are, they, they, they are hungry, you buy them whether it's pizza or it's chicken in, whether it's really hot outside and you just want to sit in and sunk in and talk about uh, how life is going, you buy them just a nice bucket or a cone of ice cream from Creamy Inn. And definitely, what happens at the end of the day? When you have spent all this time with this partner, at the end of the day, you drop them off or you walk them to a combi for them to go home, you get a peck on the cheek. You get a small little kiss, of course, barring in all the public indecency laws that we have within our country. But you get something, whether that's a peck on the cheek or whether that's going to be a hug, and you will remember that moment forever. And next time, you're not going to go down and say, I'm going to buy Sadza in the valley because really I'm short of funds here and I really can't uh, spoil her to that. You're going to go back to Chicken Inn, you're going to go back to Pizza Inn, you're going to go back to Creamy Inn or to Nando's. And all these franchise restaurants, they fall under the Simbisa brands. And when that happens, each and every time you meet your partner, you would want to impress them and you would want to bring them to these inns. And definitely this is something that I'm on the lookout for. Businesses that can create a share of mind in the consumer's mind. Consumers are really loyal because they know that whenever they buy the products, there are results to be had. Other than having a share of mind in the consumer's mind, what else are we looking at here? We're looking at a business whose volumes have also been on the uptrend as of the last trading update which they gave in November 2021. The group revenue was actually set up 74% quarter over quarter. The USD spend was 11% up year over year. Why is this important? It comes back to that point I was talking about, about this business being in the travel and leisure business. Of course, this is an interesting loophole. Why do I say this? It's because the Zimbabwean government has really been coming down on most companies to make sure that they try to use the Zimbabwean dollar in accepting their payments. But businesses that are in the travel or leisure space, because they attract tourists and because they attract people from outside the country, from outside the region, those businesses have been allowed to be able to accept foreign currency in their operations. This is why it's good. It's good for Simbisa because most businesses in Zimbabwe, despite what the government is trying to do, they have been looking for a lot of foreign currency. And when you have a business that has foreign currency receipts up 11% year over year, you're looking at a really good business year. We're looking here also at a business where as lockdown restrictions get lifted in Zimbabwe and in other countries within the region where it operates, you're likely to have people meeting up and you know having all sort of these uh, meetings where they have missed each other in a long time, they have not been able to see each other. And guess what? Quick service restaurants or fast food outlets are likely to be the meeting place where people meet up, sit around the table, enjoy a meal, talk about what they missed each other for the period of time in which they were locked down, which would definitely be good for this business. We're looking here at a business that has had its delivery unit go up 48% year over year as of the last trading update. Why is this a good thing? It is a good thing because mostly in Zimbabwe and within other countries within the region, people have not really embraced this idea to have news brought to you. But as people are slowly and reluctantly accepting this because of lockdown, it means even after lockdown, they're going to realize, well, oh, I'm lazy to go to the restaurant either way. I can just tell them to bring my meal. 
What happens when this happens? These customers become really, really, really loyal customers. They can always order, the business can always gain from supplying them and this is something that you're always on the lookout for as an investor if you want businesses that are really good. Of course, that is always the risk that we might have more variants of COVID-19 coming up or any other disease, of course, that can force us all as a people to come back in and be locked down. If we are going to have another issue like that here, then we're definitely looking at a case in which if we have another extra lockdown, then business sort of volumes will go down as fewer people go to these restaurants. But it is always it is something that I think is already being mitigated by this rise in sort of this delivery unit where even if people are going to be forced down to go back home, you will still have some people ordering from home which should at least hold and maintain the volumes in terms of the business and how it will do. Yes, I know you have been waiting for this. What is my biggest holding on the Zimbabwe Stock Exchange? Well, the answer is a corporation that most people really know very well and that drinkers and non-drinkers alike use its products every day. I'm talking here of Delta Corporation Limited which is primarily a beverages company that on one side is selling alcoholic beverages from international and local brands. It has its own line of alcoholic beverages, but we're also looking at a business that's selling non-alcoholic beverages, bottling products under the Coca-Cola sort of license operating in Zimbabwe and other businesses that it also has where it has actually managed to, to acquire over time. We're talking here of Afdis that is involved in wines and spirits. We're also talking here of sort of uh, the products that are shipped out under Schweppes Zimbabwe. That is also another line of business that is producing non-alcoholic beverages. What are the things that you need to know about Delta? The ticker symbol is DLTA. That is just Delta without the E, DLTA. The sector is consumer goods and the industry, as I have said, is beverages. Something that most of us really do enjoy on a daily, but hopefully just on a weekendly basis. Uh, I'm looking here at a business that has a market capitalization of 250.6 billion Zimbabwean dollars as of the last checking. The performance of this company has been good. Uh, as of year to date, the company has gone up 20.05%. And as of the past year, the company has gone up 382.41%. The dividend yield is actually pretty good at 1.58% as of November 2021. We're looking here at a company that enjoys a very sticky demand. What do I mean by this? You see, in most businesses, you're usually having a case where consumers either choose to buy the products or not buy the products, depending on whether they have money or not. But when you look at Delta, you're seeing a business here where when people have money, they buy the premium brands. We're talking of alcohol, they buy the premium lagers, they buy the wines and the spirits. That is when people are really liquid and they are willing to spend. Holidays, Christmas, month end, most of these other things. When people are really broke, what do they do at Delta? They don't just throw up their hands. They go for the low value products. We're talking here of uh, Chipoku in terms of alcoholic uh, side. We're talking here of sorghum brewed beer to some who might not understand what Chibuku is. On the non-alcoholic side as well here, we're looking at a business which also allows it to play the same play that it ha actually has on the alcoholic side. What do I mean? When people have a lot of money, they're buying sort of the fancy and non-alcoholic beverages. They're buying Minute Maid, they're buying Coca-Cola, Fanta, Sprite, most of these things that people buy when they really are liquid. When they don't have money, what do they do? Or they buy my hell. These are sort of on the lower value line of products, but it actually allows consumers to keep bouncing around within the portfolio, portfolio of products that this company offers. And this is something that you definitely want as an investor. And this is something that I enjoy very much about Delta but when I analyze. Of course, as COVID restrictions get lifted uh, in Zimbabwe, South Africa, and, uh, and Zambia, where this company operates, what do we see? We see more social gatherings. When there are more social gatherings, what do people need other than meat? Well, you know it, you guessed it. They need alcoholic and non-alcoholic beverages for them to, you know, to just cool down their systems, to celebrate, and to talk about life. And this is where Delta comes in, and the volumes have definitely showed how this heightened social activities have been good for the company. As of the last trading update on January 14, 2022, this year, the company has actually in informed us investors that the volumes have been on an uptrend. We're looking here at the Lagas business, which is the one that has not really gone up, popped up a lot. It's 6% for the quarter and 33% year-over-year increase in sort of the volumes of Lagas that are being pushed out. 
uh, when we're looking here, the sorghum beer business, which is sort of on that uh, sort of low line uh, that people buy when things are not really well, people are just coming out of the pandemic. They might not have a lot of money. They might be forced to save more than to just spend. What do we see? We see a 25% quarter over quarter increase and a 50% year over year increase in the volumes of sorghum beer that has actually been pushed into the market. When we go to the sparkling beverages, uh, we're seeing here a 34% quarter over quarter increase and a 62% year over year increase in the volumes of sparkling beverages that have been pushed out into the market by Delta Corporation Limited. When you look at the wines and spirits that have been pushed out by this company and its subsidiary Afdis, we're seeing here a 32% quarter over quarter increase in the volume of uh, wines and spirits and we're also seeing a 48% year over year increase in the amounts of wines and spirits that have been pushed out by this company. Group revenue has gone up 34% quarter over quarter and 51% year over year, inflation adjusted again. What are the risks that can come within this business that I so dearly love and so dearly believe in that I have put in the bulk of uh, the money that I have invested on Zimbabwe Stock Exchange? COVID, COVID, COVID. Uh, this is something that can't be ruled out. We might have other variants that can come in and if people are being forced back at home, if people are having reduced working hours, if governments are putting in bans on opening of bars, this definitely means that it's going to be difficult for the company to push out its volumes. Unlike Simbisa, which can deliver pizza at home, Delta definitely does not actually deliver alcoholic beverages to the doorstep of their consumer. And so because of this, you have a situation where if the government says bars close at three and businesses close at three, then we have a case here where people might not be able to leave work and go and buy alcoholic beverages, which is something that they usually do. Leave work, go and chill out for a couple of hours, buy some beer, buy some non-alcoholic beverages and then head home. But when these businesses are being told to close early, the outlets through which Delta sells its products, then we're going to have some problems here. The other risk that I see here is the risk of the reduction in this dividend that we so dearly love. The risk of the cut in dividend, of course, is due to the fact that management mentioned in its trading update that they are going to be trying to have more CAPEX updates in the coming financial year, that is the full year 2022. And of course, they also mentioned that they want to sort of try to push around and find ways in which they can pay off the legacy debt that they accumulated, especially the US dollar denominated legacy debt. What this means is that most of the profits that are going to come are of course going to be redirected to CAPEX. They are going to be redirected to paying off of the legacy debt, which means that there is going to be very few of these Zimbabwean dollars left for you and I as the investors in this company. Now, those who have made it to the end of this video today will actually receive a reward. I've never done this, but I'm going to try and do it today because I think I'm just in a very good mood and this is my first video recording in 2022. I want you to comment on these five stocks that I talked about in this video. I want you to comment on your favorite stock uh, below in the comments. When you make that comment, I'm going to choose 10 lucky people who are actually going to send money so that they can buy their own shares and add these shares to their portfolio. Of course, just to clarify, this is not for the first 10 comments, but it is for the lucky 10 people who will be drawn after a week of posting this video and I'll come back and make sure that I contact them and send them their money for them to buy their favorite stock of my top five holdings. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, see you. This is Maro and happy investing.